blackbird with yoga and coffee. Mm. Mm. So to continue our discussion of doing yoga in a limited space, say like a hotel room, or you know maybe your house or your home or wherever you are in the moment, you don't have a lot of space yet, you can still do yoga. There's, there's certain things you can do. Um, today I want to extend the tree idea also and do the twisted tree. And also, just the arms of it uh, is kind of a, some people call it the eagle, I think is one of the terms that it can be. There's kind of two options of it. I'm going to actually turn the coffee down. Mm -hmm. So we get a little more of it. Alright. Over there. Okay, so we have the regular tree. Make sure your feet are open a little bit. Just to reiterate the principles of it, you're pressing the leg into the other leg. I'm using a door jam to kind of steady me. Door jams are nice and strong. It's a good structural piece of um, space in any <laughs> place that you're at. Normally the door jam needs to kind of hold its own. So it's kind of a safe uh, bet, you know, some walls or not. Um, and then your hips, pushing them down, making sure they're level. Um, noticing that you're not pushing your pressure onto the knee at all. I go above the knee. So it's a nice little uh, pressure point for the inner thigh. And then my shoulders are level because I've stacked my ribs on top of my hips. So the building blocks, you know, there's all the directions, 360. So you're not just thinking forward, back. You're not just thinking side to side. You're thinking, okay, where in space are these connected? Like there's one over here and one's over here and one's way over there going to pull you in all those different points and directions, so you want to keep pressing down, but then also not no, uh, noticing that your foot is not the only thing that's going to be able to pull you up. It's the, the balance of the stack, right, and the head on top of everything else, but also the idea, the principle of the tree is the roots down in the ground. So if you can think about how you're not just a, a foot holding onto the floor, the extension underneath the floor. Where does it go after that? It's pressing down the energy that you can spread out and connect to the earth is the part of the tree. So just as tall as the tree is, underneath the ground, the roots are just as deep. Same with the building. You know, the foundation, as tall as the building is, it needs to have as much structure underneath the ground and as much stabilization as possible. Um, also noticing it's going to be a V and not uh, 180 degrees in any direction. That's very, very good. So this is the normal tree. When you do the twisted tree, the legs cross. So I would start with, I'm gonna use this behind me, but sitting a little bit. So you need to bend this leg, but make sure your knees and your toes are always in line, right? Knees over toes. So I'm gonna bend it a little, and then I'm gonna curve it. I'm gonna cross my legs like a little bit less. Um, <clears throat> sometimes for the, for the first round, it would be like a kickstand. You wanna put it into the crown. So, I'm pressing one knee into the other. So like this knee is pressing straight in to the back of my other knee. That helps me a lot um, to stabilize. And then I feel the calf on this one is kind of squished by the leg behind it, and that's okay. Um, so you're using a tough kickstand. I find this is a good option. Um, and then noticing you know, where your hips are, you can try to square them up. It's like a sitting down and back, because again, if you were to Use the balance of it if you sit back and then you're pushing forward at the same time and then you're pushing back. The where the gravity goes, you want it to continually go through the structure of your body down into the floor so that you don't have injuries anywhere. So as long as there's a connection and a flow of how, like if it was a pinball or a you know the mazes that you create, one's gonna flow here and then it's gonna flow there. And it's going to flow there. It's going to flow down into the ground. So already I feel this interesting, complex kind of groundedness, which is really fun as life is like that. Um, and then I'm going to add on top of it the same idea with the arms. So you can cross the arms, the one that's underneath, bend it up, and then turn the other one, palms up, so that you can start to try to find it. Um, find the hands around from each other. 
Another added level is to take the thumb and put it on your third eye as a pressure point, I like to do, and trying to align everything that's there. There's another option I've found where I kind of create this little teardrop and then I'm looking through it. So that was kind of another thing that I found. And it, and it can create the teardrop with the other part of your uh, part of your hand as well. So that was kind of an intricate idea. <laughs> um, notice if you switch them, what happens? So now I've got the other one underneath and I'm going to pull it up, push away. This one's going to turn facing. Try to find the other one. See what happens. I feel a little bit off balance, like everything's going one direction than the other. But just so you can feel it, um, try both sides. And then again, same idea with, with the legs sitting. We're just going to do the kickstand to start with. And then if I add my arms, one of them is natural. And I found it right away. Uh, I like the little teardrop thing. But then I also like pushing against my third eye to try and open it. Um, versus the other side. That one feels a little bit like I'm open on this side and I'm not closed. Um, or I'm too, you know, left out in the open is what I mean, rather than like encompassing an energy that, that swirls and connects all the way around. So with the twisting, I feel like with the, you can even stand without the legs and do the arms. Sometimes I'm hanging out and talking to people and I'm looking at them, but I'm pushing it over to the side a little bit and it's kind of giving me a very little stretch. This is like an unraveling. It can be it can be two different ways. You can think of it as it's a moment to it's connecting yourself to yourself, wrapping yourself back up, just like when a baby when you swaddle them right after they're born. You know they were used to this womb tight energy that was secure. So to be able to do that with yourself in a way that <laughs> it isn't always like oh I gotta hug myself and help. You know, this might not feel as, as, as connected as, um, I mean, that's a nice hug too, but to, to use this as a way to kind of refocus yourself to yourself um, and, and kind of protect yourself in a way that feels safe and swaddled and, and, and whatever. Other way, it's like a ringing, you know, where you can be ringing things out. So whenever you twist the body, it's a ringing of things. So, Ringing meaning like a towel. So if you had excess water, you're going to wring it out, you take it, and you push both directions at the same time, right? A sifter is another way. You're sifting the energy out of your body. Um, these types of mechanical things, it's also about energy. Same idea. So you could be unraveling what's going on in your life and with, your, with yourself, unravel all the things around you and, and you know, letting go of whatever else is happening around you. And and then adding the third eye part kind of just connects yourself to yourself, gives yourself the essence.